when we talk about a bubble, we talk about exuberance, about evaluation. We, we can't justify fundamentally. Evaluation is not a question of actual multiples on earnings, but the present value of future cash flows. So the main question for any investment in a company is what will be the free cash flow generation in the next five to 10 years or more? So with other words, what would be the value creation in the future or what could be the value destruction? So we need to assess correctly our assumptions in a global world, plenty of challenges like climate change, digital globalization, healthy living, but also plenty of opportunities for successful, innovative companies. On our metrics today, we are far from a bubble, but seeing all the regulators are pushing investors in the same ESG direction, I think a bubble will emerge eventually. When you talk about the long-term value of companies, we should not lose sight of the real fundamentals of a company. There are game changes on the horizon, new rules, new trends that are reshaping future fundamentals, and people, investors, find it very hard to value those intangible assets. First of all, regulation. Look at the European Commission and the new Green Deal. More than 500 billion, maybe running up until 750 billion towards a green economy to aid that transition to more sustainable growth. Fostering investments in the energy and utility sectors to decarbonize, electrifying transport and making buildings more energy efficient. Look at the European Central Bank. The ECB may adopt a very different long-term monetary policy and adapt their asset purchasing program in order to encourage climate protection. And beyond regulation, look at the other types of fundamentals, such as changing society. We are all pursuing very different consumption patterns, ones that are healthier, more circular, and with less environmental impact. This means new and very different services for you and me and new and different kind of products that we want to buy and on top of that consumers are becoming increasingly sensitive to the social aspects of the goods and the services they buy for example respect for labor and human rights a reputation for responsibility of a company in those areas is becoming a key driver of brand value and of corporate value in the long run. Therefore, those intangible, maybe, environmental, social, and governance issues do have an important role to play when we talk about the pricing of the fundamentals of a company. So those companies which innovate with products and services for a better future are better positioned to increase their fundamental growth in the long run because they adapt to changing environments. Companies that consider that broader context and apart from shareholders, also consider other stakeholders like employees, like suppliers and customers are better run companies, are companies that will generate higher growth in the long term and create more quality for our economy. Are valuations stretched? Well, Geoffroy spoke about value creation and value destruction. Let's speak about energy, for example. We tend to discuss the price of oil. And instead of dreaming about an oil price of $150 that may benefit those energy companies, think about it differently. Think about a carbon emission price of 150 euros and what that could mean for those industries and the valuation of those industries that are heavily reliant on fossil fuels. Maybe those so-called undervalued companies are actually overvalued because of mispricing when we look at the real game changes and what is happening on the horizon. ESG and valuation, is it stretched? Well, it's not only about Tesla ESG, yes, Tesla's valuation looks stretched, but maybe not stretched. It may be a real disruptor. 
and we expect many more disruptors across all sectors that are the game changers of tomorrow, that are the enablers of more sustainable growth for the future. Let's take some example of, uh, of attractive businesses that, that will surf on the next green and social wave and where we see European innovative companies as very reasonable prices. So I will take the example of building insulation, recycling of plastic, 3D conception, semiconductors used in electrical vehicles, automated laboratories, new medical treatments for diabetes or cancer, natural ingredients for better food, and so on. So I could take plenty of examples of new innovations which are part of the green or social solutions. So they will definitely create a lot of value for shareholders in the future. Today, it goes without saying that we are experiencing a real enormous humanitarian crisis with massive economic implications. I think we can no longer put the S, the social part, to the side. It is really, really time to act for all of us. And it's true that regulation and investors have been very focused on that E part, the environmental part of sustainability. But I believe that the social element has not yet been appropriately priced into the valuation of companies, although it is very important as we have seen during this crisis. And I think Jofra, and with Jofra, many other fund managers at Cameron will probably agree with me. We have already seen some progress on the environmental part, but not enough on the social part. The way that companies treat their employees, the way they deal with their suppliers, as we have seen during the COVID-19 crisis, and the way companies handle their customers, these are important social elements of a business that are key drivers of long-term value creation. So where do we go from here? I think the answer is obvious. I believe that the social part the S in ESG will become much more important in the pricing of companies. And then again, as I said before, ESG is much more than just Tesla.